an introduction to the meta model. This somewhat confusing, mysterious term is used as part of the NLP training. And the meta model is, I think, essentially a subset of logic. So if you were going to go up a logical level and say, what is the meta model an example of? What is it an example of? I would say that the meta model is an example of informal logic. And it is a somewhat formalized example of informal logic or a somewhat rigorous model of informal logic. It does not have the symbolic precision or the symbolic rigidity, I think, of uh, formal logic or academic logic. It is day-to-day -day or vernacular logic which has been cleaned up some. It does not mean that the meta model is a, a universal solution to every kind of ambiguity or <clears throat> incompletion of, of understanding. The meta model, in my way of looking at it, my way of thinking about it, is as it is taught, as the meta model is taught, the meta model serves as a way of preparing the mind of the student. So the way we learn it, the language we learn it, asking questions like, who precisely, what precisely, um, uh, how to take a nominalization and convert it back into um, a, a verb process or going from something that's fixed to a process or going from concrete thinking to abstract thinking. These are all practice tools. These are ways of developing and bettering our own mental position so when we hear things we can respond to them more flexibly and be more aware of where there are absences or gaps or vacancies in the knowledge. And the people who just learn the meta model, I would say, as a catechism, and they just deliver it as they've been taught, are often sort of uh, oppressive and excessive. The meta model should really be used in a much subtler way when it's appropriate, not all the time. And maybe the meta model can even just function in your own mind, just as a mental backstop to the kind of material you hear going on. And then when you're ready to do a challenge, a meta model challenge, of course you have to take into the account the ecology, the rapport, the person you're talking to, um, the, the sensitivity of the information, where they stand with this, how they feel about having you dig that deeply into their affairs and so on and so forth. I mean, people are sometimes ambiguous strate strategically. They're ambiguous for reasons. They know that they're being ambiguous. They're not simply being ambiguous because they are naive about what they're saying. Sometimes they're being ambiguous for very sophisticated reasons. And the meta model can be used in a sophisticated way as well as in a very unsophisticated way. I've come up with a couple of metaphors. So we've said, what is the meta model an example of? Okay, and then what are examples of it? So we could go down into what are precise examples of it in the middle ground here between the precise example of it and what is an example of. I'll, I'll give you a couple of metaphors I've come up with. Um, I think one metaphor for uh, the meta model is this. Um, uh, Consider a lot of communication like driving on long stretches of unpaved roads filled with potholes, which is either very jarring or tiring or exhausting because you're constantly steering around the potholes and the road damage trying to get to your destination. I would think of the meta model as using a paving crew that comes in and fills in all those potholes. So you have a nice, smooth, straight road where you can quickly get to the destination you want with a minimum amount of excess swerving and dodging and slamming on the brakes and slowly going down and out of the pothole so you don't damage your um, undercarriage of your car or you don't give yourself a sore neck. So that's one way of looking at it as, as a way of paving the road so you can get from the first point to the end point very smoothly and efficiently and cleanly with a minimum of wasted effort. Um, another metaphor I have sort of at the middle logical level ground is a lot of communication is like listening to an old shortwave radio where every tenth word gets dropped out and the mind has to kind of fill in what you think the, that word ought to be and you get these little bursts of static. It's very tiring. It's very draining to try to listen to 
a long broadcast, something you may be very interested in, where every tenth word is, is confusing, it's ambiguous, you're not sure what the meaning is, it's blurred, it's just a burst of static. And imagine the meta model in this case, as a metaphor, would be like getting a much better antenna or a much better receiver. So all the words and all the meanings and all the points can be transmitted very, very clearly. So it's a way of, it's a way of improving communication by, making, by cleaning it up and removing the potholes, removing the static. So the sender of the communication and the receiver of the communication can be sufficiently confident, adequately confident that there is a shared level of understanding on both sides, on the sending side and the receiving side, or in the dialectics between the back and the forth, that you're on the same plane of understanding and you're getting roughly the same information value and understanding value and you're aligned. It's very important that you're aligned on the key pieces. And all communication will have some key or critical points. You might say the, the, um, the, the vertices or the hinges that you must be very clear about in certain things. You know, we're talking about this, this specific thing that works in this specific way, and I will perform this act in the way I'm describing. And it, in some senses, it's a bit like going to contract. Okay, when people say they have an informal discussion about we're going to do this and we're going to do that, I'm going to pay you this and you're going to do that and these will be your responsibilities and these will be my responsibilities. You say, fine, I think we've got a good basic understanding. So let's go to contract. And then when you go to contract, you bring in another layer of interpretation, usually in the form of lawyers, barristers, solicitors, who will take those assumptions and test those assumptions and make sure that everybody's on the same plane and when you sign that contract you are in tight agreement as to what you mean by all those points. So what would that second layer be doing? What would their job be doing when you're sort of going to contract linguistically? They would be there carefully looking for three things. Distortions, deletions, and generalizations. Okay, so distortions I might say something, but when I say it and you hear it, you hear something different from what I said. It doesn't quite get across as I intended it. There's some distortion process. Or I might have left out some key points and just assumed that you understood the same things I did, that you were filling in all the gaps in the same way I was, and I could just safely use those deletions because that was a common practice, which is not always the case. And people are quite shocked to discover that people are deleting and filling in very different information. So when we go to contract, we're going to look for making sure that the distortions get undistorted and we're talking about the same things in the same ways with the same intentions, looking to the same outcomes through the same processes. And deletions are often another way of saying assumptions. Well, I assumed you understood or I assumed you meant or I assumed that this was the kind of uh, uh, standard you were working to. No, no, no. I, I was working to, uh, to this. My assumption was when you used that word uh, best efforts, you meant this, not that. So a lot of things can get left out. And that's another job of a good attorney is to make sure that things aren't assumed, that aren't left out, but things are explicitly stated. And of course, there's generalizations. Everyone generalizes. Um, the world is a giant generalizing machine. You can't turn on television. Everybody turns on television and people are generalizing all the time about everything. And everything is just one big foggy, gauzy, blathery generalization, which means everything to anybody. So you get these huge generalizations. Um, you know, you can't trust this kind of person or um, nobody from that part of town knows how to do this kind of job or everybody that's dressed like this must be supervised in this way. So when you sort of go to contract, you want to make sure you've got the generalizations out. You've got it down to specifics. Okay, what can this specific person do in these specific circumstances given these specific tools and these specific instructions? So that's, you know, if we said, what is the meta model about? What is it an example of? Um, that's another example. Okay, we're using the logical level uh, technique of going up a logical level. It's a form of logic. It's a form of informal logic. It's a form of going to contract. It's a form of paving roads, if we want to use a metaphorical way of logical level moving. It's a way of filtering and removing the static and, cl and clarifying the reception so we're, we're working with very high quality transmitters and receivers and the static is taken out. 
So that is a very, very simple introduction to the meta model and why we would want to use the meta model. Because I think you always have to have a very good motivation frame. If you're going to use something rigorously and put a lot of effort into it, you've got to have a great motivation. Okay? Well, if you don't have a sufficient motivation, you're never going to bother to get it right. So you think, you know, if I just had a really good attorney looking over my affairs, things would be so smooth because I wouldn't have to think about all this stuff. But typically in normal day-to-day -day speech, one does not walk around with a, a first-rate attorney, a lawyer, with them all the time, clarifying every point and putting it down in contractual form. So we need something that's a little bit in between. You know, it's not going to be that rigorous, that much of a hard case, but you want to bring that little extra degree of understanding and clarity so people are really confident they're seeing eye to eye and you really get what that person's talking about. And you're not just walking around with a head full of sort of half-formed, half-baked assumptions.